subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to press the bell icon to get all the latest updates. everyone my name is anita and i welcome you all on import of media once again before moving further i want all of you to please subscribe to this channel if you have not done yet because i am going to tell you a lot of stories around research and people like my today's guest so let's welcome professor shelly pandey from goa institute of management welcome shelly i'm so happy that you accepted our request Uh, thank you so much, Anita, and thank you so much for having me here. It will be, uh, I think, it will be a nice uh, time with you. Uh, thanks, uh, Shelly. So um, I was going through your profile. It's quite interesting, and there are so many things which are overlapping. And uh, my interest also lies in those gender, diversity, inclusion, workforce. All those key words are also very close to my heart. So I want to, you know, ask you certain questions around your research. and around your work which you are doing currently and how gim is helping you build in building your own research path okay so yeah. this institute plays a very very significant role mm -hmm. so uh, my first question to you is why did you choose research as your career uh i would i would say there are two aspects to the to answer this question one is that you know uh, the kind of teachers that you have in your life and it becomes a organic journey that you know you come and and you 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 come to that uh, that path and and then you know or you decide to go further on that path a and i think research especially phd is like dedicating and devoting 4 to 5 years of your life to one particular project of higher education and and i, th I think that has a lot to do with your personal space also if your personal space and personal commitments also allows you to dedicate those 4 to 5 years into uh, higher education and here i would say that you know sometimes men find it difficult because you know at that stage of their uh, life they are they are having the pressure to earn and not to study and 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 sometimes you know uh, uh, they are and that's why you know sometimes you see that in uh, phd and in the higher education especially in academia you you find lesser uh, men doing phd and women are more but uh, it's it's a combination of the kind of uh, teachers you get and the kind of uh, encouragement from a personal space that you get That's so i'm going to take a break because i have an announcement to make i recently got to know that gim goa institute of management is rated among the top 4 b schools for the world in the positive impact rating 2021 gim endeavors to have a positive impact on society through its six six programs and one of the programs is fellow program in management this is for people who are ready to become future leaders and disruptors gim offers this fpm program in 12 different areas like accounting big data analytics economics hrm finance healthcare management information technology marketing operations ob public policy and strategic management I learned that the faculty base is very strong, and they are offering a very good, attractive stipend. So, if you think that you have a very strong research mindset, and if you are ready to design your portfolio career, then hit the apply button with your SOP and two letter of recommendations. The application deadline is mentioned in the description box below. And if you need any help and mentoring, please write to me. My email ID is Anita at the rate Inkpothub dot com. i'm waiting for your emails and now let's resume the video okay so you have done your phd from iit delhi yes. and then you have done your post graduation from a very interesting institute um, nehru the nehru memorial national yeah, post doc from there yes yeah. so, tell me about it like how it happened so what was your phd at iit delhi and then so post doc area uh, from the nehru memorial national museum Yeah, so um, my PhD was, you know, when I started, that you know, India was um, uh, having this interesting call center industry, uh, in especially in, in Delhi NCR and other metropolitan cities, and I uh, could see uh, some of the women uh, working very closely in that industry, and I could see some of the changes that were happening in the middle class homes because of the arrival of that industry and because of the moving. uh women moving out in the night shift to work in that industry so i thought i need to uh, uh you know study a little bit uh more about it in in detail and that's why i chose my phd topic at iit delhi and i did my phd from the department of humanities and social sciences in iit delhi and that 
um, you know, the, the, the academic rigor of uh, IIT. And, and you know, uh, you would appreciate one fact about the PhD degree, Anita, that, you know, there is no ranking in PhD degree. You don't get CGPAs in PhD degree. You either get PhD degree awarded and either it is not awarded. And when it is awarded, that means that you are eligible to conduct an independent research now. You become an independent researcher. And I think IIT, the whole environment, the whole academic rigor, the kind of um, supervision I get, I, I got during my PhD, that really added uh, in, my, in my academic journey as a researcher. Moving it forward to my postdoc work, which was at Nehru Memorial Museum and Library, at uh, Thi Murti Bhavan, uh, which was uh, a very reputed, uh, uh, you know, um, fellowship that I received, um, and 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 that uh, that was a postdoc fellowship for two years. And during uh, that fellowship, I worked on uh, Afghan migrants in Delhi city, another community which I observed very closely, and uh, I thought nothing has been written about them. And uh, many people from Afghanistan came during, you know, uh, uh, early 90s. But uh, not many know that uh, many of them were from the Sikh communities and Hindu communities. Mm -hmm. And not many, you know, much literature was uh, uh, written around them. So that's why mm -hmm. I took that topic. And, uh, and, and under the ages of such a, such a reputed um, uh, uh, Fellowship of Nehru Memorial Museum and Library, which sets its own benchmark of academic rigor. Mm -hmm. it, it pushed me further to write and research and to, you know, uh, do intense reading around that area that both these journey ultimately shaped me as a researcher who I am today. Talk me up, talk, uh, talk about your books actually, which you have written. So because uh, I'm sure that I've captured all those uh, aspects which you have researched. Tell me about those books. Uh, I have uh, uh, I have edited a book which is about you know um, women's studies in India, and it's, it's, it, it it actually uh, covers the journey of women's studies as a discipline in India uh, over the last 25 years. Mm -hmm. So after my PhD in IIT Delhi, I started my uh, research as a postdoc um, at Delhi University and after uh, you know two three years then I moved to uh, Nehru Memorial Museum and Library uh, Women's Studies Center which was established by UGC to make to bring women's studies as part of the formal academia mm -hmm. and Anita you would be knowing that earlier women's studies and research and writing about women's studies and gender issues was not part of the academia much and to bring those voices into the academia, you just see broad women's studies as a discipline mm. into the academia. And when I was in, in Delhi University, it was sort of completing its 25 years of that journey. And I got the uh, you know, opportunity to document that journey into one of, the, uh, one of the books that I edited. And it has chapters from you know, remarkable feminist writers from academia. And uh, I was very fortunate to have done that. Apart from that, I have, you know, written uh, book chapters in international books on my work, both on women uh, in, in call center industry as well as Afghan migrants in Italy. Okay, okay, that's pretty interesting because uh, March, um, the 8th March, we <clears throat> celebrate International Women's Day and I'm fortunate that I'm speaking on um, uh, this particular topic with you as well on women's studies. So, um, you know, I want to ask you a question around um, women researchers. Uh, as you al al already mentioned um, in the part, you know, previous section of uh, this discussion. Mm -hmm. uh, so um, I want to know from you that is it challenging uh, to be a women researcher in India? I would answer this question in a more, uh, to, to place it and in, in, at a more general level for the benefit of more women and more men, not okay. only in research. Why? Because I would say that, you know, every work domain has the concept of ideal worker who is the ideal worker who spends most of the time on the table on the desk who doesn't talk about family who doesn't bring personal issues to the professional life and i think till we change this whole image of the ideal worker women will feel struggle to you know um, have their smooth journey in any professional domain for that it is important that once we start bringing the personal issue to the professional front 
and more than women we start appreciating men to bring personal issue on the professional table i think the ideal worker image would not change unless an ideal image work and and and, and let me come back to your question of women researcher when you say women researcher that you know it's 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 a very dedicated work of reading and writing and uh, academia also constructs an uh, ideal worker image until that becomes a mix of professional and personal commitment women will feel the struggle so um, very uh, powerful statement you mentioned women will feel the struggle i know that this is going to be very challenging and it is um it is uh, about equal partnership but then sometimes we uh, you know <coughs> fail to have that at home and we struggle at workplace or vice versa <coughs> um it's a very deep rooted question shelly maybe we'll have an in depth discussion on women and research per se uh, but i wish uh, that every women researcher here uh, who is listening to this video i wish them uh, a very happy international women's day it is uh, it is to be celebrated every day but it is always a reminder that we exist <laughs> our equal partners in everything so uh, i guess it is important for us to celebrate international women's day every year and i'm glad that you are a part of it <laughs> moving further uh, shelly uh, because you work in the space of diversity inclusion workplace gender studies um in your opinion and you are also a part of a faculty group of ob and hr yeah. so i want to know from you what is the evolving research which is you know <clears throat> coming in terms of uh, ecosystem which is now a uh, kind of very prominent in say obhr or gender studies or diversity in your experience uh, from your experience if you can talk about it i think the latest experience that i can bring here anita was of pandemic and pandemic you know got lot of things uh, in front of us in terms of what could be the research areas to explore in terms of organizational behavior now for example hybrid work for example how did we take care of the gender diversity especially the need of women or the need of people from gender diversity during crisis how employees engagement were done mm -hmm. and engagement i will extend it to employees well being mm -hmm. so these were the issues which are uh, much needed to be explored mm -hmm. in the kind of scenario of uh, research right now and when researcher actually i would say that when they choose their research topic in the contemporary times they have to think very carefully that once they finish their journey after 4 5 years of doing phd whether that issue is going to be viable even then or not mm -hmm. they have to decide the impact of that particular issue that they want to pursue mm -hmm. during these 4 5 years and even after 4 5 years because we should recognize this fact at the beginning of our journey that you know every scholar who gets into phd gets in with the aim of securing one academic position as well mm -hmm. so you have to keep the job market also in mind that what kind of jobs will be there for you once you to choose this particular topic and also mm -hmm. whether this issue will survive the shelf life of 4 to 5 years mm -hmm. that's how you should you know think about the contemporary issues that you want to pursue in terms of uh, mm. behavior that is my domain so i can i can say from that perspective and especially when you're thinking from management perspective you have to you know keep on reminding you that you are here to address the issues of the industry as well mm -hmm. whether you're the pick the, the topic or the issue that you're picking is going to be relevant or will it go back to the industry or not unless you are specifically writing something on 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 purely for the disciplinary perspective or you know academic perspective or conceptual perspective but otherwise it should be relevant for the industry after all yeah, i got it so uh, one more question which is coming from uh, <clears throat> my greatest readings and experiences um i have a question for you here um from obhr perspective you can respond to that or maybe you can do further research on that um is work from home taken for granted uh i would say that you know to answer this question we have to answer we have to ask us either as an employee or as an employer one question and that question would be on the on the idea of trust okay if employer 
has trust on the employee and if employee has a trust on the employer then this will not be a struggle okay and i think during the pandemic whatever gap whatever issues whatever struggle the employer and the employee the hr and the employee face that was somewhere trying to address somewhere trying to cover somewhere trying to highlight the idea of trust mm. and if and wherever the organization had that trust people did not struggle much mm. but wherever the employees had to prove then the the idea of struggle you know the struggle became bigger yeah okay so uh, i have a another you uh, know follow up question here mm. uh, so what about home front because uh, work from home is so because we are working from home mm. so how it is like is it taken for granted at home because you are talking in terms of employee employee relationship mm. but what about uh, employee and uh, home front so mm. we are giving a lot of time to um, at work front because nobody is seeing us so mm. there is a question of some integrity and at the other hand uh, at family front at home front we are struggling so mm. people take it for granted uh, in my opinion Mm -hmm. that uh, home home is taken for granted so i'm leaving you uh, here with this question if you can answer me in further you know research or studies if you can do from you know obhr perspective or work from home or uh, family life or work balance kind of scenario if you can do further research on that that would be great well you have you are talking to a to a to a you know feminist scholar i certainly have the answer to this question that you have you uh when you have when you when you imagine the struggle of work from home and home see this struggle will not be there once we decide whose work we value and uh, you know when uh, in 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 the present scenario of both men and women working in the house we come we enter the home with the understanding or a collaboration on the idea of adult worker model that we both are adult we both will work and we both will run the house but ultimately pandemic told many women and many families that this house is not the adult is not on the adult worker model it is still surviving on the male breadwinner model the value of the work or the uh, the 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 work was associated or attached the idea of worker was associated and attached more with men and lesser with women and that is why women were getting away from the work and moving more towards the home and men were kept on having their space at the workplace why online meetings when they converted into recreation activities why women could not participate in that during pandemic that was a major concern mm -hmm. why men could do that that was a major concern why hybrid workspaces are more for women and lesser for men that is a concern ultimately we are taking women back from the work space as a space mm -hmm. they are working but moving back away from the work space and it is quite intriguing and i'm sure that uh, you are working at uh, gim and you are getting this enough space to you know explore such kind of topics so tell me about what are those two three things which you would like to appreciate about gim's work culture in terms of research definitely um gim um gives you freedom of thought in terms of what kind of research topic that you want to uh, choose uh, anita and i would qualify that freedom uh, given the fact that it is a management institution it purely and completely appreciates the idea of interdisciplinarity so uh, you do find people working here or researching about the domestic workers and even those researches which are very close to the social issues are also appreciated so uh, one as i said is the freedom to decide your area another is the that they are thriving on the whole idea of uh, interdisciplinarity and the kind of uh, you know um, resources and flexibility provided to you uh, to do research i mean uh, you know we are we are still expanding on our on our uh, you know databases and and you know the, all the all the secondary resources we do we need and we know we are we are, we are on that trajectory uh, uh and moving on that trajectory very fast so in terms of resources freedom and interdisciplinarity gim provides you a holistic uh, 
platform to do research. Okay, okay, very interesting to hear that. So um, moving to the next part, because this is something which is very, very serious, which we have already discussed. I want to have some light bites from your uh, daily life, because how researchers think, how uh, scholars uh, live their life every day. So we're going to have a rapid fire. Can we do that? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So uh, my first question to you is, how is your typical work day like? So my work day is most of the time thinking, uh, some of the time teaching as per my timetable and some of the time reading and ultimately combination of three come in to come into my writing. Okay. So what is your current uh, book which you are reading? Uh, so recently, you know, I um, floated a course on uh, managing people through humor. So uh, I, I read a lot around, you know, how uh, you know, uh, humor at workplace, whether it is appreciated or not. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you when you're teaching, you have to do all those academic reading a lot. But to keep my, you know, uh, mind out of the this academic space and non-academic space in your mind and reading of those non-academic space also helps you to, you know, uh, uh, grow that academic space of your mind as well. So the writings of uh, Sherlock Holmes quite in interest me. So okay. I, when I when I get some time, I go back to uh, you know those uh, books which are really which are uh, written on uh, Sherlock Holmes, and uh, I, I try to enjoy reading them. Oh wow! So this is again very interesting because I'm slightly different from our rapid fire, but this is very interesting about GIM is that. Uh, the institute offers a lot of flexibility to offer courses which are non-contemporary. Yes. So one of the best things because I have seen a lot of uh, faculty members floating different courses yes. which I have not heard anywhere uh, floated in any of the institutes in India. So and we do believe in experiential learning, Anita, because, you know, we feel that, you know, what we teach over through the PPT and the book might not remain in their mind for a long time. Mm -hmm. But if I teach them something through a, you know, comic piece mm -hmm. or a, you know, a, a show which is uh, told through a, a stand-up comedian and then and through that I tell them that how you can manage people by uh -huh. facing right kind of humor, I think that would remain with them for a longer time. That's really great, uh, Shelly. Moving to the next question. Yes. Uh, what's your early morning ritual? I try to practice yoga for, for about 30 minutes, yeah. Uh, a must-have item on your work desk. My desk, yes, uh, apart from the you know, all academic necessity, I keep a bottle of water filled okay. up. Right? Yeah. Okay, so uh, what do you do when you feel stressed or overwhelmed? I listen to music. That that takes away the stress. Okay, what's your latest purchase to increase your productivity? Uh, I think uh, I cannot say that, you know, <laughs> anything that increases my productivity, but uh, I believe in a lot of retail therapy to increase my productivity. Okay. So get into a lot of uh, those things which might not directly increase my productivity, but uh, who minds shopping anyway? <laughs> and what is your favorite quotation which keeps you motivated? Uh, that keeps on changing. But, uh, you know, recently I watched this movie Top Gun Maverick. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there was a Top Gun which was in uh, 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 for about 20, 25 years ago. And there's a, you know, the second uh, sequel of that, which has recently come, which is, uh, so in that, you know, Tom Cruise is a naval aviator and then he has got old now and he becomes an instructor to teach at the Naval Academy for people to go for a very tough operation. And then at what time he's stuck at the enemy's territory and uh, then he is, the only option to survive is to ride an old uh, plane and to compete with the latest uh, plane with the enemy is having. So uh, he asked a question from his co-pilot that how am I going to do this? And the pilot says, and then his co-pilot says that remember one thing, it's not the plane, it's a pilot who is important. And if you know your skill uh, very well, then you can ride any plane. So I think that really moved me that it's not the plane, it's a pilot that runs the show. Absolutely. 
I recently learned a quote uh, which talks about it's not about uh, places. So when we say that we travel a lot and we you know see a lot of things uh, and experience and explore. Uh, so I read it like um, um, it's not about places; it's about people who you travel with. Yes, yes, yes. So, uh, so uh, I think Shelly. Um, I don't want to close this conversation, but we have to because uh, time is running short. So I think uh, we'll close this, but we'll come. I will come to you again to discuss about your course on humor, and I would like to have the list of movies or shows which are you know hilarious, and from <laughs> there we can learn how to manage people. I really want to know the list of all those movies and definitely, shows. Definitely, definitely, Nita. It will be my pleasure to have a conversation with you on that as well. Thank you so much, Shelly, and it's my pleasure to have you. Thank you so much, Anita. Thank you for having me here. It was nice to talk to you. It's great to see you all here. Thank you for watching our work. If you have not subscribed to Ink Pot Hub Media, then please hit the bell icon and subscribe to our channel and support research celebrations in India.